Where's Baldo? I know I saw him come in here. There he is, but something doesn't seem right. Waldo, are you okay? You don't seem to be feeling well. Chest pain? Sweaty. Cold and clammy? How's your breathing? Short of breath? Very fast heart rate. Waldo, I think it's time we get you hooked up to a heart monitor. All right, Waldo, I talked to the doctor, and you're definitely in ventricular tachycardia. VTAC. So he ordered cardioversion and IV amiodarone to start. What is amiodarone? Amiodarone is a class 3 antiarrhythmic drug. It is most often used to treat ventricular tachycardia. What is ventricular tachycardia, you ask? Well, ventricular tachycardia, or VTAC, is an irregular rapid heart rate originating from one of your ventricles in your heart. VTAC is a serious condition because if not corrected, it can lead to ventricular fibrillation, FIFib, or asystole. As you saw with Waldo, symptoms are chest pain, shorter breath, and fast heart rate. Let's take a look into Waldo's heart and see what VTAC looks like. As you can see, here's Waldo. His heart is in normal sinus rhythm. Oh, he experienced a little bit of a misfire there. Another one. And again eventually resulting in increased heart rate ventricular tachycardia. Amiodarone can be given by mouth or IV. Amiodarone is highly protein bound. This is why distribution is so slow. Amiodarone is also lipid soluble. This contributes to the drug being highly toxic. It allows the drug to concentrate itself in cell membranes including the liver, heart, and fat cells. Amiodarone prolongs repolarization and prolongs the resting period of a contraction. This helps the heart rate to slow down and allow more feeling time and increase cardiac output. It also blocks calcium channels to slow heart rate as well as decrease O2 demand by acting as a vasodilator. Some side effects of amiodarone include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, lethargic, and dizziness. It can also cause hypotension, so always make sure to know a patient's blood pressure before administering. Giving amiodarone can also cause arrhythmias. Strict cardiac monitoring is key when a patient is on amiodarone. Serious side effects include liver disease, so make sure to check AST and ALT lab values and pulmonary toxicity. Okay, Waldo, are we good? Waldo? Waldo, are you okay? Waldo! Waldo, are you okay? He's in ventricular fibrillation. Code blue, you get the oxygen starting chest compressions. All right, it's been two minutes. He's still in V-fib. I'm going to shock. Stand back. Still in V-fib, give one milligram epinephrine, continuing CPR. What is epinephrine? It is a non-selective adrenergic agonist. It is used for many reasons, but our main focus today is for treating cardiac emergencies. And the one Waldo is experiencing right now is ventricular fibrillation. What is ventricular fibrillation, you ask? Well, as we saw with VTAC, the heart was beating very fast and irregular. If the heart continues in this pattern, it eventually tires out and leads to ineffective contractions, meaning no cardiac output, and presents with various waveforms and amplitudes on an EKG. As we just saw Waldo's heart, it looks like it is quivering. Epinephrine can be given many ways, including IV, injection, and inhalation. It also has rapid effects on your body. Because epinephrine is non-selective, it stimulates all receptors. By stimulating alpha-1, it causes increased contraction and vasoconstriction. Beta-1 increases heart rate and contraction. Beta-2 causes vasodilation and usually acts on the lungs causing bronchodilation. I'm sure you noticed that alpha-1 stimulation causes vasoconstriction and beta-2 stimulation causes vasodilation. So wouldn't they cancel each other out and have no effect? Actually, no. Epinephrine is dose-dependent, so the higher the dose, alpha-1 usually overrides beta-2. 
Stimulating these receptors helps startle the heart back into regular sinus rhythm with effective contractions and increased cardiac output. Some side effects of epinephrine include nausea and vomiting, fatigue, headache, dizziness, tremors, hypertension crisis, and arrhythmias. It is important to monitor vital signs, focusing on blood pressure and pulse. It is also important to watch EKG changes since it causes arrhythmias. According to ACLS guidelines, epinephrine should be given after two cycles of CPR. Always initiate CPR first, after two minutes and still no change, shock heart, and repeat CPR again. If still no change, administer one milligram of epinephrine every three to five minutes. Two minutes, I'm going to shock again. Stand back. Clear. Alright, still in VFib. If this doesn't work, get the amiodarone ready. Alright, he's back in sinus rhythm. Woohoo! Ready for amiodarone, yeah! Welcome back, Waldo. You gave us quite a scare. What happened? Well, your heart went into this funky rhythm called ventricular fibrillation. And so we had to start CPR, shock your heart, and give you epinephrine. But you seem to be doing well now. You're back in sinus rhythm. Thank you so much for saving my life. You're welcome. But now I just want you to rest, and that way you can get back to hiding in those books quicker, okay? All right, Waldo, I have your discharge paperwork. Waldo? Where's Waldo?